Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you that how we can perform no SQL injection on web applications. But before going into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have shown you that how we can uh, find blind accesses on live websites, then I recommend you to check that out. The link will be given in the description as well as you can see it somewhere around your screen. And with that said, let's get started. Also, if you are new to our channel and if you don't know about our website, which is bepractical.tech, then I also recommend you to check that out. The link is uh, will be displaying over here and as you can see let me open the website over here so this is the web application in this particular website we have awesome labs for cyber security as well as web developments and all those labs are based on real world scenarios so do check this out so it's taking some time so yeah perfect as you can see this is the website and we have labs for cyber security as well as web development uh, under this lab section uh, if you want to increase your uh, ui ux development skills designing skills then check out this front end challenges and build your ui design and if you want to hack if you want to know that uh, how an hacker actually hacks into a website or how an hacker actually uh, steals credentials of users then i recommend you to check all these labs uh, related to account takeovers and all these labs are based on real world scenario also we have awesome articles written over here like bypass antivirus installing Kali Linux on windows without a VMware or VirtualBox so yeah do check this out so finally let's get started now first of all let us talk about what is a no SQL injection right so in my previous video I've shown you that how we can perform SQL injection on live website right so SQL is a relational database which means that all the data is stored in a uh, tabular format right but in no sql the data will be stored in a collection or in a dictionary in programming terms so let us talk about why this is different in sql we need an sql query right in order to fetch data in order to insert data in order to uh, delete data right but nowadays modern application are switching on to mongodb or any other no sql uh, database right because they are relevant very uh, they require a very low system requirement to run and they are uh, extremely fast compared compared to SQL uh, databases, right? So this is why many applications is moving toward no SQL. Now let us talk about how we can hack into no SQL uh, implemented web application, right? So first of all, let us understand that how no SQL uh, works, right? So suppose that if you want to fetch a data from a particular, uh, you know, a particular uh, table, then what we need to do is we need to write some query on it, right? So you may get that query displaying on the screen right now but in sql uh, sorry in uh, no sql what we see is is a simple uh, you can say a statement right so it is not like the query that we have seen in the sql injection uh, sql it is rather a kind of statement that is used to fetch and insert data and since all the data is in curly braces in dictionary format then it will be very difficult for us or for a hacker to hack into uh, no sql database but still there is the same vulnerability present in NoSQL that was present earlier in the SQL uh, databases. So let me show you how. So in SQL injection, sorry, yeah, in SQL injection, we have to put a payload something like this, right? You are seeing this on the screen. So we have to put something like or one equals to one and sleep or sleep five. And if the server sleeps for five seconds, then we can confirm that indeed we found a uh, SQL injection, right? Now in a uh, Mongo database, the query will be replaced by the Mongo's query, right? So let me show you how. First of all, let us try to understand how the application works. So you need to open this particular website on your machine. So this is a lab that we have set up for you. So you can open this link over 3.110.162.106.8080. Now, after that, you will see a screen something to this, similar to this. Now, let me show you the source code of this particular lab. So I'm just going to open the source code index.js uh, sorry js yeah but also before going into this let me show you that how this application is working so if i provide my uh, credential like admin at the rate vpractical.tech and if i provide a wrong password for example let's say one two three four it will not allow us to log in right it's showing us that incorrect password but if i provide my right password let me show you so the actual password is batman over here so if i provide my right password as you can see, we are being redirected to our dashboard, right? So let me head back again. So right now we have confirmed that this application is using some kind of database. Now let us try to understand the source code behind this application. 
so i'm just going to open it and as you can see here is the source code but the most important thing for us is these particular lines so here is the lines that we need to focus on now whenever someone is posting their request on this login endpoint what this application is doing it is storing the username and it is storing the password right and after that it is using a find query to find the username with this particular username provided by the user and the password that user provided and if that user is inside the database then it is going to render the index.ejs file or the admin panel and if the user is not present in the database then it will be redirected to this uh, script which will say incorrect password and it will redirect them back to their home page now let us try to understand how this uh, database query is working so it is using this find uh, function in order to uh, execute this particular query so it is providing username with the username that the user may have provided and the password and if there is two callback function if the uh, database if this query resulted in success then it is going to handled by this if condition and if the success length is greater than zero which means that if there is actual a person whose actual uh, username is the username which the user provided and the password then it is going to redirect us to the index.egs or the admin panel so i hope you are getting this now let us try to understand that what we can possibly do in order to perform a no sql injection so let us see how we can do that so first of all let me uh, intercept this request in my browser as in my web suit so i'm just going to type the uh, email account and any random password let's say 1234 now let me turn on the intercept and let's intercept this particular request so as you can see and what i'm going to do i'm going to send this to repeater so that we can manipulate with the request later on and i'm just going to forward the request and as you can see that it is showing me that incorrect password right now let us head to the repeater and here let's try to see what we can do to uh, confirm we have an no sql injection right so let's send this request and as you can see it is showing that incorrect password now what will happen if i provided something like this if i type dollar ne and i am going to get rid of this password now this dollar nd has a special meaning in no sql so this ne equals to not equals to and this query will be uh, executed from here let me show you nano index.js so the username will be this admin at the be practical.tech and in the password the password will get ne equals to null which is nothing right so the password will store any equals to null and any since any has a special meaning which it means that it is not equals to then this query query will run and in this password it will uh, send not equals to empty right and since we know that any username and any account will have a password of something of uh, length right so the password cannot be empty right and here what the attacker is trying to do it is passing a query that says that not equals to empty right so it is simply saying that find me a account whose username starts with admin at the rate bpractical.tech and his password must not be empty and since we know and since this application is intentionally vulnerable to no sql then it will fetch the data and it is going to redirect us to index.ejs so let me show you how so right now if i provide this if i hit enter or if i click on send as you can see it has redirected us to admin so similar to this we have many queries like we have greater than so we can also use greater than over here like if i type greater than and since we know that the password should it will always be greater than null right so it is again going to uh, be executed because the password should be greater than null right so again we should see welcome admin so if i click on send again you can see we again got welcome admin so let's try this query now and let's see whether we get the admin's account or not so i'm going to click over here and let's wait so actually i have turned on the intercept let me turn it off and now if i provided the username which was admin at the rate bpractical.tech uh, bpractical.tech and the password which was 
batman but we are going to provide a wrong password let's say 0010 i'm going to turn on the intercept and i'm going to click on login and now here what we are going to do we are going to get rid of this and here we are going to pass our query which is dollar and we can do greater than or not equal to it totally depends on you i am going to go with greater than and now let us forward this request and since more we know that the password will always be greater than null nothing right so it is going to always return true and it is also always going to fetch the actual account admin at the back to dot tech without providing the right password right so as you can see the password is null and now if i forward this request and perfect as you can see we have successfully got logged in into the admin's account without proper authorization or without proper credentials so do check this lab out and do let me know if you have any doubts or issues and also join our telegram channel where we can discuss multiple things related to cyber security as well as web development or any other technology that you like so that's it thanks for watching